Welcome back, everybody. Um, our next session on uh, exploring uh, data.census.gov will start in just a moment. All right, so uh, Tyson, you can go ahead and queue up your presentation and I'll do an introduction. So hello everyone who's been on the phone with us today. Again, my name is Heidi Crawford, Data Dissemination Specialist with the Census Bureau. And I'd like to introduce um, my peer, Tyson Weister. And Tyson is a survey statistician for enterprise dissemination, where he engages users in the future of accessing census data and provides trainings on data.census.gov. He has specialized experience in helping data users data using a variety of tools. And Tyson holds a bachelor's degree in economics and public affairs, along with a master's degree in communication. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to Tyson. I'd like, I know that a lot of you are interested in the subject and learning the new tool. So I think Tyson will have a lot of um, good things to share with us today. Go ahead, Great. Tyson. Great. Thank you so much. Is my audio coming through clearly? Yes, we can hear you and see you. Great. Excellent. Um, so we'll go ahead and dive in today with that. I'm really excited that you all have interest in learning more about the new tool data.census.gov. Today, we're just going to open up with a very brief introduction for what data.census.gov is in case you're new or just want a little more background about the pretty big transition that we've done at the Census Bureau. And then most of what we're going to focus on today is a live demonstration. So our goal is to make sure that you walk away comfortable knowing how to search the site, how to access tables, download the data, and map out information. And then I have a few common questions that we get from our users that we'll go over, but really we want to make sure that we tailor this to you and the questions that you all have. So as we're going about this, think about what questions you have put them in the chat and really excited to get to those at the end. What is data.census.gov? Well, we've been using American Fact Finder for over 20 years and we've switched the way that we're providing data at the Census Bureau and why are we going about this big change? Ever since we launched census.gov in 94, our organization has organically created individual tools and applications for you to access Census Bureau data. There's hundreds of different tools that exist outside of census.gov. You have to know to go to these separate websites to access the information and the skills that you learn in accessing census data in one tool, like American Fact Finder, aren't transferable in helping you access census data in other tools like Data Ferret. So with that model, we've received overwhelming feedback to standardize, simplify, and put everything in one place. So that's the long-term vision as to why we're doing this change. With data.census.gov, we are able to control the development in-house and align it with the needs of our users. We are using a two-month development cycle process where we continuously take feedback, improve the site, and push our updates live every two months. And the API or application programming interface is at the heart of everything that we do. So that's kind of what the image is showing you on the right-hand side. In order for you to get data on data.census.gov, it has to be loaded into our public API. The benefit of that is it allows us the flexibility to display information, not just in a table format, but we're able to create different views and merge data together in a single view. We'll show you one of the examples like that at the end. Surveys and programs that we have on data.census.gov right now, we have data from the American Community Survey from 2010 to the present. We have a lot of the tables from the 2010 census, and we're working to migrate a few additional types of tables. And we have a little bit from census 2000, and we're working to migrate those additional sets of tables. And then our econ surveys and programs, we have some of the more popular ones on the site now, like the economic census, county business patterns, that data are available from 2012 forward. 
beyond this list, we are working towards onboarding new surveys and programs and migrating some additional data. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the live demonstration here. I do have slides that go step by step of what I wanted to show you all today, just walking through a couple of different examples. Um, but just wanted to point that out. So if you maybe don't catch a step as I'm going or you want something to look back on, you will have that resource available. On the landing page here on data.census.gov, we do recommend using Google Chrome. And the main thing to point out here is there are two points that you can go about into entering the search. There's the search bar you have at the top and then the advanced search experience. I'm going to walk through two examples using the advanced search and we'll come back to the single search later. The reason I like to use the advanced search is conceptually it's pretty familiar with what you were used to using in the past. It lets you explore the options that are available to you and um, it lets you more precisely select things because you're looking for a checkbox as a final selection. When you put things in the single search bar, the system has to determine if what you're typing in is a topic, a geography, something else, and it's sometimes easier and more precise to select it through the advanced search filters here. So on the advanced search page, if you're just new to census data and you don't know the table ID of what you're looking for, you can just start with these filters on the left. What I'm going to pull up is the health insurance, so specifically looking for the percentage of people without health insurance. And I want to look across that for three different geographies, for the city of Tacoma, the county, Pierce County, and then I'm just going to pull that into the context of this Seattle MSA just for more information. So under geography on the left, we can choose whatever's most important to get started. We'll go ahead and specify one of the geographies. So I'm going to choose the city of Tacoma by clicking place. And then if it prompts you for information, go ahead and complete that. Here we'll choose the state of Washington. It will give you the first 100 places in Washington. And when we scroll to the bottom of the list, it will load the next set of 100. So I can continue to do that. Or my favorite way is to click the spyglass in the upper right and then start typing in Tacoma. And even if my scroll hasn't loaded all the way to the T's, it knows to search for the list of cities in Washington. And that lets me check the box for Tacoma City, Washington. Once you check that, just make sure it's been added to the bottom of your screen as a selected filter. We can use this process to continue to select other geographies. Here I will select the county, choose Washington, and then Pierce County. Make sure it's been added to the screen as a selected filter. And then for context, we will click the Metropolitan Statistical Area, Micropolitan Area. Click the search box in the upper right and start typing in Seattle. And here I'll click the result for Seattle, Tacoma, Bellevue, Washington, metro area. Next, we have our three geographies. We'll go ahead and specify health insurance as a topic, clicking topics, health, and then we see some options for health insurance. Check the box. Just as an item of note, as you're working through the filters here, just be mindful that a checkbox is a final selection. And any words and phrases that you see that don't have checkboxes, that means it's going to open up more detailed options to your right. In our case, we've already selected what we're looking for. We have health insurance, the three geographies. Once we're happy with that, we click search in the lower right. This will take you to the all results page. It just gives you the top three table recommendations, the corresponding maps, and then the top three web pages on census.gov. Usually if I'm looking for the data, I kind of drill into the tables and the maps by default. So clicking tables in the upper left, 
here we see for our results, there were 80 different tables that matched the search criteria we selected. In our first table, as we scroll to the right, we see Pierce County, Tacoma, and the metro area as our selected geographies. They're side by side. And what I want to look for is data on folks that don't have health insurance. I notice in the table titles that some of the titles at the top are specifically for people that have public health insurance versus private health insurance. So I'm going to kind of bypass some of those first results. And then going down just a little further, I see a table that I'm interested in, Selected Characteristics of Health Insurance Coverage in the United States, S2701. So we can kind of scroll through the list. The nice thing about data.census.gov, although you don't have a view where you can quickly scan all of the table titles very fast if you wanted to scan a long list, but what is nice is you can click the different titles on the left and see the data on the right without having to go into a separate view. Um, looking into this table, once you find something that you're interested in and want to take a closer look at, you can click Customize Table in the upper right and do what we did before. You can scroll to the right just to see the data that this has to offer. The tables that start with S are the subject tables from the American Community Survey, and they usually have different columns. So I see there's a column for the total population, the population that has insurance, as well as the corresponding percent. And then we can see in Pierce County, there's approximately 48,000 folks without health insurance, or about 5.6% of the population in the county. Not only does this table provide total of uninsured and the corresponding percents, but as you scroll down, you get all the characteristics of folks broken out by health insurance status, also broken out by their age group, sex, race, and Hispanic origin, living arrangements, and many more different types of categories. You may not be interested in all the information and you can customize your view on the table here. So just wanna show you a couple of things. One is as you scroll to the right, notice that you eventually just start to see data and you lose the label in the far left. If you want to freeze that in place on your screen, you can hold, click the very first cell in the upper left and I'm just clicking and moving directly left. And once that icon changes to the push pin and you let go of it, you can freeze that column in place. So that way you still have context as to what you're looking at when you scroll right to left. A couple other things you can do, you can hide individual columns. So here, if I just wanted to look at the percent uninsured across these geographies, we can click percent uninsured. I'm just going to repeat that here for the three geographies that we have. So this helps me look at it a little bit more clean. I can see 5.6% without insurance in Pierce County versus 6.3 in Tacoma, and then the 5.6 for the metro area overall. So we can definitely see that there are areas in Pierce County that have higher concentrations and lower concentrations in regards to the percent health insurance without health insurance. So we'll take a look at that a little bit in more detail later. But one of the questions that we often get is how can I work with the data off the site? There are a couple of different ways. I'm going to show you two of them now. One is you can copy and paste what you see on your screen. So you can select a grouping of cells or you can use the keyboard shortcut control A which will select the entire table. This is the only way for you to get the customizations that you made on your table display to carry over into the output is through the copy paste. So once we've selected everything with control A, right click and choose copy with headers. And then opening up your Excel file, you can paste that and notice it's pasted exactly what we see on screen. We have our labels and just the columns for the percent uninsured and the margins of error.
The other way you can work with the data off the site that I'm going to show you now is exporting the table. When you right click, hover over export table and choose export to Excel. This is going to give you the entire table, um, but that's going to include all of it. So even the columns that you hid will appear in the table. Taking just a moment here to load up. Um, and each of the indentations that you saw on the table, they show in this file format as an individual column. So they do have meaning. That is one of the benefits of the export is it still shows what those indentations are and you have that meaning to reference. And then you start to see the data. Any of these options where you're right clicking the table, you're exporting it, you're copy paste, you're going to get output that looks similar to the table display on data.census.gov where you have your geographies in the columns and your labels on the left. Now I want to show another example to go about searching, clicking the US Census logo in the upper left, and then going back once again to the advanced search. We had seen the 5.6% without health insurance in Pierce County, but know that there's some differences within the county, so I want to take a look at that. I'm going to pull up a map of this at the census tract level. So to get started, if you know the table ID, once you find it one time and you like the information that's in the table, if you're going to use it repeatedly, I recommend writing it down or saving a link somewhere. The most direct way you can go about searching for your table is to type in that table ID and you just put the S2701 under the advanced search heading. Here we can go about selecting our geography. Here I want all of the census tracts in Pierce County. It's the closest um, resemblance to a neighborhood in Census Bureau data. So under geography, tract, Washington, Pierce County, and then click the button for all census tracts within Pierce County. We'll go ahead and click search in the lower right. And here it's searched directly by table ID. I'll click tables in the upper left. And we just have the one result since that's what we specified this time. As the table's loading, everything's being pulled from the application programming interface in real time. So when you have larger collections of geographies, it does take more time for it to populate on screen. So everything is being pulled on the fly. Another reason why it's helpful to write down those table IDs. So when you find that table, when you search for it directly, it's easier and more efficient, especially if you're working with large collections of geographies, rather than clicking between many different tables on the left and the system having to pull all of that information for you. But this table we already looked at earlier, we know that there were several columns. So the fifth column had the percent uninsured and it was the very first line of the table. With that, you can map out any data point that you see in our tables by clicking maps in the upper left. This by default is gonna take you to a selection map. So you can on the map itself, click to add or remove additional census tracts from your selection. Um, but we've already selected all the tracts in Pierce County, which is what I want. So what I'm just going to do is manually zoom into my selected area. Here we see Pierce County and the different census tracts. Again, these are all population based. So census tracts that appear small smaller geographically are more densely populated in comparison to the census tracts with much larger geographic areas that you see here. On the left hand side, when we're happy with our selection, we go ahead and click on the table ID that we're interested in. Here there's just one to click on, S2701, and you can see it starting to fill in that map for you with some color. However, what it's doing is mapping out the very first estimate that we see in the upper left of the table, the total non-institutionalized civilian population. We can change that pretty easily here just by clicking on Customize Map in the upper right. 
and then it's the data variable drop down. It's also accessible at the very top of your screen. You can just see it a little better if you click customize map first. What I like to do is scroll down and my scroll is going to keep jumping back up. Everything on our site loads in sections. So once I scroll down and my scroll gets to the bottom and stops jumping, I know I've loaded all of the available options that I can choose to map from the table. And looking at the options at a quick glance, we can see just like we had on our table, there was a column for the total, the column for insured, percent insured. The very last column was our percent uninsured. And each set of estimates will also have ordering that's similar to what you saw on the table. So the very first line is the total percent of the civilian non-institutionalized population without health insurance. And then you get all the age breakouts and other demographics underneath it. Here we have our label percent uninsured civilian non-institutionalized population estimate. And once we click that, it's updated our map. So we can see here that you have quite a bit of difference in the shaded areas from areas with even 0% of the population without health insurance, as you're looking kind of on the a military installation there. But right next to this area, you can see some of the darkest shades of blue where you have neighborhoods with the highest percent of the population without health insurance, the 23.6% of the population, for example, that lives in this census tract, 717.04. And once you're on our maps, when you start zooming in more, if you're not familiar with census tracts already, you can start to see the street labels begin to populate. So you can get a sense as to what that area means for you. One other thing on the maps that I just wanted to show you the map is really helpful if you want to look at okay we know overall the 5.6 in the county but what does that really look like and where are there people that may be in need geographically you can also click on the left once you've clicked customize map the view table button and this is going to give you whatever that single estimate that you mapped out here the percent without health insurance for all of the geographies you selected. And when you click the column header, it will sort that information in ascending or descending order. So if we wanted to find the top census tracts in the county with percent without health insurance, it's very easy to do in this view. Just like before, you can also right click this and export the data or copy and paste if you just wanted a subset of the information from that entire table, which had quite a bit of different breakouts in it. Another thing I wanted to show you here, I clicked go to full table, is how you can download the data. The first two methods that I showed you on this site for exporting the information as well as the copy paste gives you data output that looks similar to what you're seeing on screen. But what most people do notice is there's a download button on our site in a couple of places. I'm gonna go through that process now by clicking download. When you are downloading, one thing to be mindful of here, in some cases, you may see an option to download the one and the five-year estimates. And if your geography is only available for five-year, like the census tract level of geography, you do want to make sure that only the five-year option is checked. Go ahead and click download and let it load up to 100% and choose download now. Uh, we do recommend Google Chrome as the recommended browser for data.census.gov. It's going to give you the best speed and performance. And when you use that, your downloaded file will be in the lower left. So here I'm going to open up that zip file. It will give me three different files here. So we have three items. One has data with overlays in the naming convention. And then there are two additional data files that I'm not going to open up today. Um, but they just have the labels in one and then some additional table information. 
but just to show you what this looks like, very different from what you were seeing on screen. You actually have your geographies as an individual row, rather in the columns, and then the estimates that you saw in the nice table display on data.census.gov, here are separate um, estimates in a flat format with no special formatting or indentation as you go across the row. However, if you wanted to sort, map, or manipulate the data, this is a perfect file format for doing that. One thing that we want to point out, actually two things, one is that your estimates are in the column beginning with C. You may not always see the very first estimate of the table in column C. However, it is in the full download. So this is showing that we're getting information from table S2701 underscore C01, which references column one underscore 020E, which references the 20th estimate from the table. Normally it would start at the first estimate, but you can of course sort this information if you wanted to sort it in order from A to Z. Custom sort is what you want to do, actually, and um, you can sort it from right to left. So here, just sorting by row one, just so we can get a little bit more of a sense as to how this looked. Here we have the very first estimate from the table for the total civilian non-institutionalized population, and as we go across, once we get to the set ending in C01. Here I'm just going to type percent uninsured. We can see the API label for that very first line we've been working with on the table view as well as the map is now in column RW. This is the API variable name and this is the label also pulling that information from the API. And then these are all the percentages that we saw and mapped out on data.census.gov. Going back to the site here, I wanted to show you one other thing is how you can change the table ID. Once you're ready to make a tweak to that, click into the single search bar, and then you wanna click on advanced search. And the reason you wanna go back to the advanced search screen is that is the only way you can go about making changes while keeping your geography selection intact. So if you don't wanna make the selection for all census tracts or whatever custom set of geography you've already specified, using this method allows you to type in another table ID. Here I'm gonna type in S1501. And you can put more than one table ID in at a time, or you can of course uh, swap them out. Here I'm gonna just add one and click search in the lower right, tables in the upper left. And notice now I have both of those table IDs, data for what we had looked at initially, as well as this new table for educational attainment in S1501. And it's loading the data on the right hand side. Um, that's the process to go about selecting new table IDs or making tweaks. And while that's loading up, I'm gonna go ahead and open up another tab here. Really, I just wanted to show you all the process. The other thing that I also wanted to showcase here is that you can copy the URL and save where you're at on the site. So in this case, if you go to the advanced search page, if you want to copy, it's going to maintain the text selection you put in the box here, as well as whatever filters you've selected. And once you paste that in a new tab, it's gonna take you right back to the advanced search page with those selections in. This works from the advanced search page view as well as the full table view if you wanted to save an exact table result. Moving on, just to showcase some other ways to go about searching on the site is through that single search bar. Just wanted to show you some quick things here. One is our geography profile. I'm gonna pull up that for King County. Go ahead. 
and click search. So when you search for that geography on the all results page, the right hand side of your screen will have a blue box that says explore data. Clicking on the box, we can see it's zoomed into a map of the geography with some basic information. The top for statistics from the Census Bureau for that geography. And then as we scroll down, we get high level information on the left, like median age, with more detailed information on the right in the form of easy to digest bar charts, line charts, and maps. And we can of course click on different sections on the left, like business and economy. And this is what I was talking about, where we have the data from different views displayed together, uh, or different data sets displayed together for a single view. Here we have county business patterns, we have estimates, we have maps, all in one place. Another thing you can type in the single search bar is your topic and your geography. So here I'm just going to type in education in Bremerton and hit search. We initially showed how to select the topic tag for health insurance and the tags for our individual geographies. You can go ahead and specify them in the single search bar. It works particularly well if you have a single topic and a single geography. You can notice at the very top of our screen, we put a featured statistic to answer what most people come to the Census Bureau for on the topic, 22.4% of folks in the city have a bachelor's degree or higher. And then clicking into tables, we have 76 different table results that we can drill through, just as if we had selected this through the advanced search. And then the last thing I wanted to show you is a little less about the site and more just about one of our common data tables from the American Community Survey are our data profiles. So here I'm putting in DP, it's the table prefix for the different data profiles from the American Community Survey. If you're feeling overwhelmed with all of the Census Bureau data, we publish 11 billion statistics every year from the American Community Survey alone. Mind you, we also have all of the other different surveys and programs in data.census.gov. The geography profile I showed you a moment ago is a great starting point, but so are the data profiles. Data profile two, three, four, and five from the American Community Survey. The reason I like these is because they cover all of the topics from the American Community Survey in just four tables. So as we scroll down, we notice different sections like marital status, grandparents, school enrollment, and educational attainment. And it gives you the data in the form of totals as well as the corresponding percentages. And it also has a collection of the most popular statistics from the different surveys and programs. So you won't find a lot of cross tabulations, but you won't find educational attainment broken out by race in this table, but you will get the most common information that you would be looking for on the topic, like the different educational attainment breakouts for all of the population 25 years and over, and the percent high school and percent bachelor's degree or higher. Moving back to the slides here, uh, if you all want to start thinking of questions, and hopefully you've asked them on the chat already, just wanted to go through some of the common ones that we get before we transition to your own questions. One is where are the population estimates? We haven't released those on data.census.gov yet, but you can continue to access them with the link on this slide. So don't frustrate yourself looking for them on the site. They're not quite there yet. We're working to add future releases. We talked about how Chrome is the recommended browser. It gives you the best speed and performance. Where are the checkboxes to select all geographies? We don't have all of the checkboxes that were available to you in the past, but we're working to add them based on your feedback. So if there's something that you're not seeing, one of the examples that we get lots of folks asking for right now is how do I access data for all the zip code areas in Washington or my state, whatever that may be, um, email us. And in the meantime, you can continue to access the data 
sometimes by selecting it on the map. We also have the option to download data in bulk through the FTP site or API. And if you email us, we may have some other ideas on how you can access the data. Why am I losing my geographies and other selected filters? So we talked about clicking into the single search bar and then clicking on advanced search. That method allows you to keep your selected filters and specify a new table ID, or you can add or remove filters from the advanced search page. How do I find the geographies for an address? There was an address lookup functionality on the previous site that we are working towards building in the future, but in the meantime, we already have a tool at the Census Bureau called the Census Geocoder, and you can use that to find the census tract, city, county, or other area of interest associated with a specific address. It's pretty easy to use, and we have a step-by-step -step process and the lower right of this screen that walks you through, as well as these slides in the webinar and the walking you through how to find the areas associated with our regional office in California. It's just inputting the address, making a minor tweak to the URL that allows you to get results for your custom geography rather than the default layers. So in this case, I wanted to look at data all the way down to the block group level. So that's why I had to go about editing the URL. And here we can see it's part of block group one, census tract 3105.01 in Los Angeles County. How can I print my table? If you're working with a very small table with a single geography, you can press control P while you're on the site. Anything larger than that, and it most likely won't print the full length or width of the table. So we recommend exporting it into Excel or copy paste and printing from Excel or saving it as a PDF. And then just know in the meantime, we're aware of the limitations of the print functionality and we're working towards building that out in the future. We showed one example of this in the table that we downloaded why the data was not in order and also occasionally the geographies will not be in alphabetical or ordered by FIPS code and that is applied both in your download and on the site. So the data is coming from the API and we haven't built the functionality that enables us to sort the information that's coming through the API into the download or the table display. It's something that we're aware of and looking into, but just know that even though the data aren't in order, it is in the full data download and you can download and sort it manually in the meantime if you need it to be ordered. Will my customizations carry over to the download? The only way for all of your customizations you made on screen to carry over is to use the copy paste method. Again, it's control A to select all of the cells and then just right click the table and copy it. There are limited situations where some export customizations carry over, but in general, the copy paste is the best method you want your customizations to carry over. If you're seeing an error message on the left for download failed, the best recommendation is what we mentioned in the downloaded process. Here's a screenshot showing where the user has the option to, to select one in five years. Those options depend on the totality of the geographies that you selected on the site. And if you have a geography layer, like census tracts or zip code tabulation areas that are only available for five year, please make sure that's the only box that's checked. If you continue to get this error message, please copy the URL and email it to us at sedsci.feedback at census.gov, and we can um, best replicate where you're at on the site by you sending us the URL and we can offer guidance from there. Also, if you're getting data not available error message as well, um, a good recommendation again is to check your product dropdown selection. It's at the top of your table and make sure it's set to the ACS five-year estimates. 
if you continue to receive the message. There could be other reasons. Check your internet connection, reload the page, or press F5. And then um, there could be instances where the data truly isn't available because it's not available from the underlying survey or program due to data quality concerns. These all vary by survey and program. And if you're not sure why you're getting the message, you can email us and we can provide links to the technical documentation and more detailed information. We mentioned the API a couple of times throughout the webinar today. If you're interested in using the API, it is public application programming interface. And if you visit the link for what is data.census.gov, we have a section devoted to educational materials on how to use the API. We'll also be giving a webinar next month on the 22nd, where we'll walk through a live demonstration. But what we already have available are PDF walkthroughs, step-by-step -step with screenshots and short videos showing you how you could go about selecting and calling just an individual estimate, as well as the entire table. Our area also provides educational materials for a section of data.census.gov slash MDAT. That is the microdata analysis tool. If you wanted to dig in deeper on the American Community Survey data, maybe you see a table that doesn't have the level of detail in the topic that you want and the categories of the table aren't as you would like, we do offer you the underlying set of edited survey responses. We take about two thirds of the responses to the ACS. We remove information so you can identify particular households. And then you can use that underlying set to create your custom tables. We have more information on how to use this on the whatisdata.census.gov site as well. On the microdata access, there are PDFs as well as a full length webinar. In addition, we have some current population survey data available through this tool as well. With that, what we're able to show today in the webinar um, is a good overview of the functionality and the different ways of searching, but we definitely have more resources available. The one-stop shop is in the upper left on the whatisdata.census.gov link. Everything we're doing is based on your feedback, so please tell us how we can make the site work better for you by emailing sedsci.feedback at census.gov. And with that, we'll go ahead and start opening it up for questions. Great, uh, Tyson, you uh, did have a couple questions come in during your presentation. So these may have ended up being addressed, but I'm going to uh, start with those. How do you search on specific tables like S2701, for example? Okay, sure. So we'll just revisit that again, especially because there are two different ways to go about it. The preferred way is to visit the site, go to the advanced search, and type it in the first text box directly under the advanced search heading, and then click search. And we have click tables in the upper left. You can directly type your table ID here. The problem is that when you go to edit the table ID later on, if you don't go back to the advanced search page, you'll lose the geographies you selected and you'll have to select everything from over, over from scratch. So that's why we recommend advanced search page and just use that first box. Great, next question is, if you hide columns, can you download with those columns hidden? That is only through the copy-paste method. Any of the other options to export or download, those customizations will not be reflected. We will take feedback on folks that would like that functionality. It really helps us to hear how often folks ask for that information because of a large list of things that we would like to do to make the site better and have to prioritize what we can realistically accomplish first. So that's great feedback for us that you'd like that functionality. 
In the meantime, it's the copy paste. We had a comment come in, I believe it was related to API. Uh, that is awesome. That is something I would like to share with community partners. So I just wanted to share that with you. And yeah. then the next question. In your uninsured map example, you have shown the percentage uninsured by tract instead of the census tract ID. I'm not certain that I understand the question. Was that something that came through chat or? It did. Would you repeat it one more time first and then um, hopefully the person can also clarify in the chat the difference of what they mean. In your uninsured map example, could you have shown the percentage uninsured by tract instead of the census tract ID? Steve, if you'd like to clarify, either you can unmute and clarify your question or add additional um, context in the chat box. I have additional context. Your thematic map example showed census tract numbers displayed. Could it have displayed the actual data values? Oh, no, it does not display them on the map. You have to click on the tract in order to display the data values. The only indication visually you get of the data values is the color breakout for the legend. Just show the map again really quickly. Um, but that's great feedback for us that you'd like that functionality to see not necessarily the geography name, but the values listed out. So in this example, we're just at the state level instead of the tract and you see the abbreviations for the state. But as you start to map out um, the data, it doesn't say 64,000 or 640,271 belongs to any of these individual states. You just have to click on the map to see the actual values. Do we have any other questions? Tyson, while we wait for to see if uh, folks have some other questions, um, I wanted to ask, uh, in terms of things that are being worked on for the future, can you just talk about some of those things? Yes. So, by and large, we are gearing up for the 2020 census. And with that, knowing that that data is available for much smaller geographies, all the way down to the block level, that people are going to want and need to download that data and they're gonna want it in bulk. Even as it stands now, a lot of the questions we get about the site or comments from users are have to do with the site performance, if they're selecting a large number of geographies, possibly coming across error messages or not being able to download information. So that's our top and biggest priority in terms of aligning ourselves with what users are saying that they want and need now and where there are gaps in the site and knowing that we're gearing up for the 2020 census and that needs only going to increase more. So in general, download performance and being able to select the geographies that you need. So adding those check boxes that we don't currently have now. And then kind of beyond that, working to add additional functionality based on user requests. And then another question, Tyson, that I had that maybe folks will be interested in is that, um, are you, is it, it's correct, is it correct in saying that you are still working with some of the subject matter areas to figure out 
um, importing what tables they would like to see in data.census.gov and what will end up going into the API and that folks might have to access some tables from the API. Yeah, that's a great question. So we actually have a part, what is data.census.gov? It's the link that is provided in many slides throughout, but I just want to show a minute because it touches on what you're describing. So by and large, the individual surveys and programs had the flexibility to determine what vintages of data they wanted to migrate over to the site. That all goes through a review process and migration process, and um, we worked in coordination with those areas. So for the data that's not there, so as one example, the American Community Survey started in 2005. Here's data from 05 to 09, but that's only available on the API because their data is available from 2010 forward on our site. On the What Is page, you can kind of see the data that's coming soon and until then where you can find it, as well as it lists out a section where data that won't be migrated, CCS data prior to 2010. But then we do provide the link of where you can get that information. The ACS is available on the FTP site. It's also available on the API. So that's another reason why it may be beneficial to learn more about the APIs to access some of this information. Um, the population estimates have their information in downloadable files, and it just varies by um, survey and program. But generally, you'll either see the FTP site, downloadable tables, or the API. And basically, once you get to this part of the POP estimates, you would just get an Excel file that has the data. Yeah, and Tyson had mentioned, and he has it on his slides, and those of you that were on during the first session when I spoke a few minutes about Census Academy, so that's where you can find some of the sessions that Tyson and his teammates have done on data.census.gov. It's uh, census.gov slash academy, so you can find some of the recorded sessions that have done on, been done on data.census.gov. Tyson's actually going up there now. And then also uh, we have done in the past a session on the API and showing how to use that and examples of that. So those of you that are interested in the API, you'll be able to find that up here as well. And as Tyson mentioned, uh, on future uh, sessions that they'll conduct, you'll be able to find information on future sessions that we'll have for data.census.gov, as well as uh, all the other topics that we have across the Bureau that we do webinars for. And then uh, Chris, and via the chat. We have, yeah, we do have another questions come in. I noticed that the PDF option wasn't available for the table download in your example, only CSV format. Are there size limitations for a PDF table download? That is something that's grayed out intentionally because we have hopes and dreams of adding it. However, the technical work that's needed to actually enable the PDF button is something that we haven't been able to dedicate as of yet. So in the meantime, the best option is to right-click, copy, paste, or export the table and either use it from Excel or convert the Excel to a PDF, but we don't have a PDF option on the site now. It's not related to size, it's grayed out across the board. And we know that's probably a feature that you've heard about because people already have been used to using that through AFF. Yeah, we're having lots of talks. What we're hearing from folks specifically is PDF is nice and some of the reasons why they like PDF. Um, I don't know for certain if we're going to be putting out PDF, but the things that we're hearing is that they want information to look nicely like it is displayed. They want it to be complete. Everything should be shown. They want the Census Bureau logo in the output itself, as well as all of the um, 
identifying information that's needed. So the table notes, the table ID, those are some of the things that we're missing in the current options as well. And a lot of folks just hitting home that they need something official from the Census Bureau and to be able to show it to others. So that's what, what we're hearing and where I think a lot of users are coming from with PDF in specific. Okay, uh, so it looks like, uh, so if anybody has any last questions that they would like to ask Tyson, uh, please go ahead and feel free to type those in the chat, or again, you can use the raise the hand feature if you'd like to verbally ask those questions. And in the meantime, I'll say that, um, just, you know, anything, you all may know this, but uh, anything that we have on our website, it's free to use. If you wanna capture screenshots or the data, um, and use it in your presentations, reports. We just ask that you reference our, our data when you do so. All right, and Tyson will just give it another few seconds here and see if we've got any last things. Learn something today and that this was valuable and help you will help you use this tool uh, more efficiently and effectively in the future with the things that Tyson was able to share with us today. So if you wanna just say any notes, if there's things uh, that you learned today that you didn't know and you found this helpful, that feedback is great. All right, Tyson, well, it doesn't look like we have anything else coming in. So with that, uh, I think I can say that uh, this was super helpful. I know there are a few things that I learned that I'm still trying to learn this tool. So there are definitely some things that I learned today from you. And I think you showed us some really great stuff that people should be able to use. And with that, we're getting some thank yous and some great presentations. And yes, very helpful. And thank you. Great, well, so thank you all. Today. Today. Of course, thank you. All right. So with that, uh, thanks again to Tyson and uh, we'll have just a couple extra minutes for your break. So we'll go ahead and break and our next session will be starting at 11.30. So you got a few minutes to stretch and grab another cup of coffee. <laughs>